Melissa Sue Anderson is best known for her unforgettable role as the blind Mary Ingalls from The Little House on the Prairie. From the series pilot debut in 1974 until today, Melissa has been a part of our lives and families. She certainly never dreamed or imagined that the show would still be so successful more than 30 years later. For many years now, Melissa Anderson has privileged her family life and was rarely seen on TV as a result, and she's been greatly missed by her Little House fans. Melissa, thank you for sharing some anecdotes and memories with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Now, let's begin with your audition for Little House. Did you specifically audition to play Mary Ingalls? Well, actually, in the very beginning, I didn't even know what I was auditioning for. It was a period Western, they said. And then they explained to me it was, it was going to be a pilot, hopefully a series, based on this series of books, Little House on the Prairie. And then I got very excited because I was the right age. I had read the books. So, uh, and then I realized it was for Mary. It would have, you know, I, I knew that had to have been who the character, you know, I would play. And they then, and I think they had at least 200 girls for each role at that point, uh, at least Laura and Mary. And then they narrowed that down to 10 or so to meet with Michael Landon and read for him. And then they narrowed that down a little bit more, and we had screen tests. Uh, and uh, went and I, I think I did scenes with well, Melissa Gilbert. He just, he just and I think right they, they actually paired us up with different, uh, it's hard to remember now, but they had some Marys with different Lauras and some Lauras with different Marys and like that. And, uh, and we, we, we did the film tests of that. And then uh, it was, it seemed like a long time later, it was at least a week before, before we heard anything. And I, I, I didn't feel that it went, I thought it went well, but I didn't feel like maybe I had gotten it because I left and they were still doing other Laura's and other Mary's and I thought, well, one of them will probably. Um, but it all worked out. I think they liked my blue eyes. They thought I was very merry with the blue eyes, and so uh, so I was happy one way or the other. It was it was it was fine. It was great. <laughs> they probably saw that you and Melissa Gilbert would make a great team. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I think so. Do you remember your first meeting with Melissa and with Michael Landon? Can we give a name? Uh, well, Melissa, I think we met during that audition period, and uh, we, that was interesting, too. We were all, all the girls, 10, 12 of us for each role. Uh, we all had to go to school together because it was during the school year, so there was a school teacher on the set, and we all had to go to school in between our auditions. And uh, uh, so we all kind of knew each other and got together and you know and and some of us had already known each other and then um, with Michael uh, I met him before the screen test which was when I just read for him and it was late in the day it was about five o'clock when I had my meeting with him and I was his last meeting and he walked my mother and I down the stairs we were going the wrong way of course and <laughs> and he, he shows us the correct way out of the building and we're talking and everything. And I remember saying that I loved the, and, and not knowing what would eventually happen to me, my character on Little House, but I, I said to him, I loved the episode of Bonanza when he went blind. You know, there was that one episode where he went blind and then he got his sight back. Uh, but I said, but my mom put me to bed in the middle of it because I wasn't allowed to normally to even watch Bonanza, I don't think, but, but that particular one I really wanted to see, but I had to go to, the bed, go to bed halfway through it. And he had fun with that. He said, what, you put her to bed in the middle of my great show? And he went on and on and um, showed me his grade. He had this terrific car that I've loved ever since. He had a Jaguar E-Type 12 with a long front. It was really cool. And that was, it was fun, it was definitely fun.
before Little House, you mainly did commercials. Yes. I, I, I did, uh, I started when I was nine, and I did lots of commercials um, at that time. And then I did my first part, speaking part, uh, in, a, in, a, in episodic television was uh, on The Brady Bunch. Yes, you kissed little Bobby. Right. It was the big... <laughs> I, I, I'm still trying to find that episode. I don't have it, and I would love to have it. I, I think my kids would get a huge kick out of seeing that. I'll find it uh, for you. Oh, that would, <laughs> if you could find that, that would be great. And then after that uh, came Little House. It must have been a big difference to go from a 30-second TV commercial to a two-hour TV movie shot on location. It was. It was. I had never. Uh, I had never filmed. I think I'd done one commercial on a beach, once, uh, but otherwise, no. I'd never been out of a studio, um, and uh, so we did do a lot of it on location. And um, and the weather. You know, we were in Stockton, California, that rains and rain, and it was winter. It rains and rains and rains. Uh, our big equipment trucks sunk to the axles in the rain. I mean, it, it was cold. It was cold. And um, it was still very exciting, I have to say, you know, that the excitement, you know, made it all worth it. Uh, but it was, yeah, it was different, it was hard, but overall a very great learning experience and I was happy to do it and it was, it was fun. A few months later, the series is launched and you discover Simi Valley, where all the buildings of Walnut Grove were built. Any memories? Uh, well, we had a problem with that, too. Um, in the beginning, they had made a deal in a place called Woodland Hills, uh, California, in the valley, that would have been a lot closer into Hollywood. It wouldn't have been quite so far as Simi Valley was to go. Uh, but it wasn't quite as much land. And they had a big neighbor problem. The neighbors said, no, absolutely not. So that was changed, and then Simi Valley being farther out, there was less going on, less construction, less new construction going up and all that. Uh, so it, it ultimately worked out for the best that that happened. And, um, and, and my greatest concern was that I'd had asthma f as a kid for, uh, well, many years, and I certainly was on allergy shots for seven and a half years. And I was concerned that the grass and the pollen and the winds out there and that, that my, my allergies would be terrible. But uh, Michael Landon liked to say it was psychosomatic, that I was happy now and it went away. <laughs> so that's what he said. There's also the, you know, the, the, the school of thought that the allergy shots for seven and a half years worked and, you know, and, and I didn't need them anymore. So I wasn't affected, um, which was very good. Is it true that your asthma led you to dancing and then on to acting? My asthma um, doctors at that time believed in developing the lungs, doing anything sports oriented that would develop the lungs. So I was on a swim team and I ice skated and I danced and I and uh, and it and it turned out to be a dancing teacher that I had that that thought I had potential as an actress and I should try that out. And a, about a year or so went by of him uh, saying, you know, mentioning those things to my mother and I kind of overheard that and I thought it was an interesting idea, which was odd for me because I was quite shy. So I don't know why I thought it was interesting, but I did. And it, it you know, it, it all worked out. Um, it turned out to be a, a niche for me at that time uh, where I felt like I could really fit in. I can't. I got to start my new job in the morning. Where are you working? Delivery. <laughs> 